All right, guys, so let's uh, get this started. So I had to turn my phone off because people want to stop blowing me up for some reason. Um, so we did the animation blueprint, and now we're going to set up the base of the AI controller. So under the third person uh, folder, we're going to create a new folder, and we're going to call it uh, NPC. You can call it whatever you want, really, but this is what we're going to put the AI controller in and the state tree as well. So we're going to right click and go to blueprint class and type in AIC and it'll pull up AI controller. We're going to select detour crowd AI controller. Now the only difference I know of between the detour crowd AI controller and the regular one is that the detour crowd AI controller implements a special uh, version of the RVO avoidance system that you'll find on the character movement uh, component. And the one that it uses actually gets, it actually integrates it partially with the pathfinding, which makes it a little bit better than the one on the character movement component. Because of this, if you choose this one, you don't need to enable the RVO avoidance system on the movement component because it would be uh, uh, meaningless as far as I know to have both of them. So, AIC NPC. If you had if you had both of them enabled, you would be running the algorithm twice. Basically, uh, it would make it twice as expensive for almost no benefit at all. So anyway, we don't really actually need to do anything inside of here. You can uh, start AI logic on possess, but really we're not using a behavior tree, so that I don't think that's even really. Uh, useful in our case. So under blueprints, go to the BP third person character folder and under class defaults, you can come over here if this is all expanded, which it should be, and go to collapse all categories and it'll collapse everything. Scroll all the way down and then look for pawn, or you can just search for it. I like to know where these things are though. So AI controller class, we're gonna set that to AI C NPC. Right here, we don't need to change this, but if you wanted to spawn it in, then you could change this to placed in world or spawned, uh, depending on your needs. But for our situation, we just need to be the default. Um, we don't need to spawn them. So under the components, we're gonna add a component, a state tree. So search for state and it'll pull it up. So the state tree component uh, requires a special, type of state tree um, or a state tree with a specific schema. So a schema is just basically a kind of layout So for the state tree. So whenever we create our state tree, you'll see what I mean. Uh, depending on the plugins that you have enabled, you may have more than uh, what will show up under mine. And if you're using a newer version, then you'll likely have uh, a version of this uh, state tree component and state tree schema specifically for the AI controller. The reason why I'm uh, setting it up under the third person blueprint character in this one um, is because uh, they don't yet, they haven't yet released the AI controller version. And I've tried to use this on the AI controller in 5.3 and had problems uh, with it. And so I think it expects it to be on an actual character uh, in 5.3, but there will be a special version of this for the AI controller and later versions. I've already uh, looked and seen and set them up actually. So anyway, we're gonna create a new folder under here. We're gonna call it state tree. And this is what we're gonna place our state tree in. And the reason why is because we're gonna have tasks and stuff, conditions, that we're gonna make for the state tree and we're gonna place them under here in subfolders. So under artificial intelligence, we're gonna say state tree. It's gonna ask us what schema we want. So we're gonna want a state tree component schema for the AI and for the smart objects, we're going to want a gameplay interaction state tree schema. So to select the state tree component schema if you didn't, it won't show up under that uh, state tree component on your character. 
So I'm going to call it STNPC. And now under here, you'll see it shows up. If you open this up, you'll see that we have a schema of state tree component, and you can change this in here. Uh, we have a context class, actor class, and if you don't specifically set this, you won't be able to access specific variables from this class uh, from inside of here on the tasks. So we're going to select the BP third person character, and this will allow us to access variables uh, from that character blueprint. That's all we're going to do inside of here for now. We'll come back to this and set up a uh, custom uh, state logic uh, later. Oh, well, there was one thing I was going to show you. So if we create a parameter inside of here, you'll see it will show up under here. And this allows you to set the default values of parameters on a per character or per, per instance basis. So we don't actually need parameters on ours. So I'm going to remove that. And you'll see it went away. I'm going to reset that because I don't want it to cause problems. So anyway, right here, you'll see we're casting to a player controller. Now this doesn't really matter because if it's not a, if it's an AI controller, it'll fail that cast and nothing will happen. Uh, so we don't actually need to change anything else in here. We can leave everything the same. And this will also allow you to still possess it and control it, which will work fine for testing purposes. So with that out of the way, we can uh, go ahead and start setting up our smart object uh, logic. And I guess we'll go ahead and do that in the next video. So I'm going to end this video here.